Hi, welcome to the Mostly Mike Show. Today I'll show you how I made a few tweaks to a $38 Harbor Freight motorcycle wheel chalk to make it compatible with my Coleman mini bike, which a lot of you who have been watching my videos know is Trail Force One. If you like hauling your mini bike on the back of a truck or a van as I do mine, keep watching. This video is going to change everything, unless it doesn't. My goal is to be able to load Trail Force One into the Mike Abego and transporter without using straps to my trails, which are just a couple miles from the most of the Mike Show headquarters. If I had to haul her further, I'd undoubtedly strap her in place to avoid catastrophe. The most of the Mike Show accepts no responsibility for damages or injuries sustained by replicating my actions in this video. In other words, do this at your own risk. So I bought what I will call the $38 wheel chalk that Harbor Freight Tools carries in their stores. I read many reviews on many different motorcycle wheel chalks, and this one seemed to have many reviews stating that it was super wide, which is likely ideal for Trail Force One's 7-inch wide tires. Let's see what's in the box. Okay, there's the owner's manual. It's like just the main body itself. It comes fully assembled. It's like a few, looks like there's a few places for adjustment, and there's a pack of hardware. First off, I will try to push Trail Force One onto the chalk as it comes from the factory, without mounting it to anything solid just to check the fit. As you can see, the main body is plenty wide enough to hold the front tire, but the part that rocks... No, not that kind of rocks. No, not that kind either. Okay, let me start over. The part that pivots to keep the tire from backing out is a little too narrow, but don't you worry, we're going to make that right. Observe what needs to be done. I'm going to work without a script here, so please bear with me. No, not that kind of bear. I'm not going to go through this again. Let's just do this. I don't think it's going to be too hard to, uh, to bend these pieces here, which I'm going to show you in a second. Now, we're not building a Swiss watch, so that doesn't have to be exact, but I believe I'm going to bend these out to where they're going to, at least when you look uh, straight down the end, what I'm shooting for is to make these pieces here even with the outer edge which all I'm gonna have to do is bend the cradle and I don't think that's gonna be too hard to do so just take our 17 millimeter wrench buzz these off okay, now before I tweak this I'm gonna I'm gonna move the camera in a little bit closer to the part move it on down what we're gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna measure it to make sure, like we're a little over six and a quarter between these. And it's roughly the same in the back. I'm not doing anything exact here, but I'm just gonna bend this thing out. I have a four by four and a two by four. Some scrap wood I have laying around. I was originally gonna put this in a hydraulic press, but not all of you have a hydraulic press, so, and uh, not everybody has a bench vise. What I'm gonna do, is lay it on top here. Take this block of wood so I don't mar the paint, if you're worried about that. And I have this brass hammer. I'm just gonna give it a couple whacks. Before we get too carried away, let's see what we did here. And we're about six and five eighths, so it is spreading the piece out a little bit. And if we flip it around, do the back side a little bit. I'm just gonna give it a few more wax, a couple love taps. The bigger the hammer, the more effect it's gonna have on what you're doing. You know what just fell there but on my camera lens cap. Let's get a look at where we're at here. Just pull the camera in a little closer. And about six and five eighths on the back side. I'm gonna rotate this back around. And we're about six and three quarter on the front. And right there, we're about seven inches. Back. We're a little over seven in the back, so I'm going to give this front a couple more taps and I think we're going to be good. This is where we get precise about it. There's seven inches. 
Now let's check it for fit. Oh, we got all kinds of room yet in there. And you'll see that these arms are kind of splayed inward a little bit, but once we get the bolts in, it should pull them right back where they need to be. I'm gonna mount these to the top bolt. Just see if it works better or worse than before. I don't wanna bore you with the nuts and bolts issues here. Can't wait to see if this works. I don't want them tight, tight. I want it to where it's going to move yet. That's feeling pretty good. That works amazing. So yeah, I think the top hole is the way to go. And you can see how it just kind of locks its way in. I'm going to take the bike off of it now. Now we just need to get it mounted to a piece of plywood. Once I achieved the desired tweak tolerances, I tried mounting the wheel chalk assembly to a scrap piece of plywood, which I cut from an octagonal window that I installed on the Mostly Mike Show headquarters renovation. But this wasn't good enough. Ideally, if you could mount it to the floor of your vehicle, that would be optimum. But in my case, I use my vehicles for other things, as you probably do as well. I had another plywood remnant a couple feet wide and long enough to go under the back wheel, already painted white. This piece should be at least long enough to fit both tires over and at least two feet wide for lateral stability. In my case, I just screwed the octagonal piece that it was already mounted to to the larger piece centering it as good as can be expected. This already made it pretty solid. I proceeded to give it several earthquake checks and Trail Force 1 just lied there and took it. I think that's going to ride just fine as long as it doesn't slide forward. Now it's time to road test the wheel chalk by taking Trail Force 1 to the trails in my van using no tie-downs or straps. It seemed to perform nearly almost flawlessly while whipping the wheel and brake checking several times. She leaned a little after some sharp turns, but I felt no fear of her falling completely over. And this definitely streamlines the loading and unloading process. As far as I'm concerned, the project is a success. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I can't wait to hear what you think. Thanks for watching this Mostly Mike Show presentation, and I'll see you next time.